I just bought this house and I'm gonna give it to Chandler. Really? No. Bruh. Today we're going to talk about gynecomastia, which affects an estimated 40 to 60 percent of men globally. If you have any questions? This condition is due to enlargement of glandular tissue in the male chest, leading to a decrease in self-esteem and body confidence. Darkness, darkness. It is estimated that up to 33 percent of men with gynecomastia may experience significant distress as a result of their condition. What did you say? Stick around till the end, where we cover surgical advances in treatment of gynecomastia that will leave minimal scars. Put your machete away. Put it away. And won't require anesthesia. Hi, I'm Dr. John Paul Aleva, cosmetic surgeon here in New York City. So, what exactly is gynecomastia? PowerPoint is boring. It is a medical condition that is characterized by the enlargement of male breast tissue affecting an estimated 60% of men at some point in their lives. Understanding the causes of this condition is crucial in addressing and correcting it. There are two peaks of incidence. The first is puberty and the second is late middle age. Gynecomastia during puberty is a common occurrence, with about 70% of teenage boys experiencing some degree of breast enlargement. The good news is that for most men it's only temporary. In fact, around 90% of cases of puberty-related gynecomastia will resolve on their own within two years. Obesity is an increasingly common cause of large breast development. Gynecomastia can also be caused by certain medications like anti-anxiety medications, spironolactone, or steroids. Bodybuilders often try and reduce their risk of gynecomastia by using tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitors. You will try. These treatments don't always work. I have seen and treated a significant number of patients with puffy nipples, a mild form of gynecomastia. Additionally, genetics can play a role in determining a man's susceptibility to developing gynecomastia, as can underlying health conditions such as liver disease. To assess the severity of gynecomastia, most doctors use a grading system, which can categorize the condition into four grades. Grade one is a mild gynecomastia. This is a slight breast enlargement and no sagging. An example of this would be a bodybuilder with puffy nipples. Seeing you like this just breaks my damn heart. Treatment for this may require gland excision through a small infraareolar incision plus or minus liposuction. Grade two is moderate gynecomastia with moderate breast enlargement and slight sagging. Treatment for this may require gland excision through a small infraareolar incision plus or minus liposuction with or without the use of skin tightening devices such as Renuvion. Grade three is severe gynecomastia with significant breast enlargement and sagging. Treatment for this may require gland excision through an infraareolar incision plus or minus liposuction with the use of skin tightening devices such as Renuvion. Grade four. Is that what I think it is? You didn't think it was gonna be that easy, did you? Extreme gynecomastia, or a man with extremely large pendulous breasts, to the point where tissue hangs down several inches and is visibly noticeable. The treatment for grade four gynecomastia often requires a full breast reduction procedure. This is because the excess skin after surgery may be past the point of what can be achieved with Renuvion. While non-surgical treatments such as maintaining a healthy diet and exercise regimen can help to decrease the size of the gland, they will not eliminate it. The definitive treatment for gynecomastia is surgery. Oh God. Liposuction alone falls short in treating dense fibrotic subareolar breast tissue. Although ultrasound-assisted liposuction claims to effectively remove fat and glandular tissue, it is not effective for the specific area. In addition, ultrasound liposuction has a higher incidence of seroma when compared to power-assisted liposuction. It scares me. 